Oh man, that was awesome. What an episode of Star Wars television that was. As a Star Wars nerd, that episode of The Ahsoka Show tickled me in every single way. This show for me just went from being very decent to very good in the span of just one episode. I haven't posted much on this channel lately with regards to Star Wars, but this episode certainly warranted making a video. I have enjoyed a lot of it so far for four episodes, and it's by no means been perfect. I have pointed out some things that I thought could have been done differently, but other than that, I've just enjoyed being inside another new show again with regards to Star Wars. Before we get into my thoughts, I just wanted to say that this channel is very, very close to a thousand subscribers, so I would appreciate the support if you want to see more videos from me. I thought episode one and two were a good beginning for getting us introduced into this new story. Again, there were a couple of things that I did nitpick and said that it would have been better off done differently, but they didn't dumb down my enjoyment of what they were giving me. As a big time Rebels fan, it's all good to be back in the world of those characters and the places that they know, like Lothal, seeing the crew again, and then you even have some faces that I wasn't expecting to see, like Ryder Azadi, and then even Jai Kel as a government official. I feel like all four episodes have done a good job at laying the groundwork and really building up the world of what we've seen before, but also stuff that gets us back into a rhythm of seeing these characters in live action form. I've enjoyed seeing our main characters back again with Hera, Sabine, Ahsoka, and then even someone as great as Hu Yang. That droid can be very honest, but also subtly funny without really even trying to come off that way. He kind of gives off uncle and dad vibes when he's with our main characters, and I kind of like that about him. If there's one thing that Star Wars has done so well with over the years, it's giving droids maybe some of the best personalities and most memorable moments. From droids like K2SO, B2 Emo, C3PO, Hu Yang, and even my boy Chopper, who is just great as always, even when he's not committing war crimes and mass genocide against the Empire. So as we lead up to episode 4, those are basically my general thoughts of where the series has been and I've enjoyed it but there have been some things that I could nitpick uh, as I said already. Some of those things namely being the runtime. I wish that these episodes were a bit longer. There have been some moments in the show where characters don't talk and there's just moments of silence for a little too long and a few character decisions were a little questionable but again other than that it's just for the most part everything that I noticed that I could nitpick. Episode 4 though is like I said in the title where the show has become very good for me. An episode that even with its runtime felt longer than it actually was. We got so much inside of this episode, and in that way, it did feel like the mid-season end because after all, the show is eight episodes, and this was the fourth. Everything from the build-up to the very end until the very last shots, where we get the reveal of Anakin Skywalker in the world between worlds. I love how the episode established the question of what the moral choice is going to be if and when both Sabine and Ahsoka find the map that leads to the galaxy where both Ezra and Thrawn are stranded. For for Ahsoka, she is conflicted because she knows deep down Thrawn must be stopped. But for Sabine, she is also conflicted but thinks differently in the sense that she wants to get Ezra back no matter what. She cares deeply about her friend, so much so that she thinks of him as a brother, kind of like how he said that he thought of her as a sister back in episode 1 in the hologram message. It is kind of an interesting message between both because they both rely on the morals that they've been taught and the life that they've experienced. One of Anakin's teachings to Ahsoka was the idea that sometimes it is best to always know the purpose and stick to that before your feelings and do what is requested of you. For someone like Sabine, Bean, who is Mandalorian but has also experienced great tragedy in her life losing her family, she deep down feels that this is her main priority. She doesn't want to lose anybody else because she might feel like she doesn't have that many people left to look to. Yes, sure, she is obviously still friends with the Rebels crew and has some relationship with Ahsoka, but after Rebels and after the war ended, it felt like she really wanted to fulfill her main goal, which was to reunite with the person she felt was the most family to her, and that was Ezra. I'd be curious to know how you all think about that. Obviously, we know which person's morals came to the light in the end, so I'm just so fascinated to know what is going to eventually happen next in these last four episodes. I will also say that the lightsaber fights and the action so far in this show have been very good in my eyes. It, it It's honestly kind of felt like it's been a mix of the sequel and prequel style fights, where with the sequels, there was like a bit more weight to it, but it was a little slower, and with the prequels, it was much, much faster, and I feel like here with these fights, it's like a mix of both. And in particular, I really liked the fight between Ahsoka and Merrick, who I am not disappointed in any way is not somebody that we should have known. I do feel like the internet hyped it up a little bit too much, even though it was a fun conversation to have theorizing who it could be. 
I think it is an inquisitor, but I also feel like there was something more to it without there really being a lot. I'm just personally glad that people's theories of him being Ezra are not true because I think that would not have made any sense. It was a good fight nonetheless, and it looks like we're not going to be seeing that character anymore, unfortunately. I do think, though, my favorite part of the episode by far was the interactions between Ahsoka and Balin. If it hasn't been said enough already, Ray Stevenson has maybe been the most interesting but also terrifying presence in the entire show out of any character. I love how Dave Filoni has written him to where you are just constantly trying to figure out what his goals are, but also where he came from. We know that he's a survivor of Order 66, but deep down, I feel like there's definitely more to his character than just him surviving one of the biggest atrocities in all of Star Wars lore. He doesn't consider himself a Jedi, but more of someone who feels like he's more of a gray-like Jedi, but with a Sith-like aesthetic. That's one of the reasons why I think his lightsaber color being orange is the way it is. It's like the gray version of a Sith, whereas Ahsoka is a gray version of a light-sided Jedi, even, even though she's not technically considered a Jedi anymore. They are both conflicted characters who feel like they are open-minded, but also not taking any one side. They both have morals, and with Ray Stevenson as Balin, it just is personified so much through the great acting from Ray, who is making it more and more heartbreaking that we will not be able to see him do anything more after his unfortunate passing in real life. I found their duel to be very entertaining in contrast with the fact that simultaneously Sabine was fighting Shin, who, by the way, again, another interesting character that I want to learn more about. She is somebody who is not a survivor of Order 66, so it only begs the question of where she came from. Is she a child of Balin? Is she someone that he just randomly picked up along the way that he felt and saw the Force in? Like, I, I would theorize that one of my good theories for this is that she could be a Force-sensitive child that was never picked up by the Jedi Order that he stumbled upon while after he survived Order 66. Or, like I said, she could just be his daughter, but I'm sure we'll find out very soon in the next several episodes. Once we get to the very end of the episode, after Balin won his duel against Ahsoka and Sabine turned herself over with the map, I love how chilling it did get when they jumped through hyperspace with a giant hyperspace ring. I think deep down, someone like Hera truly just realized that things were about to get very bad for the galaxy. Although, I will say, I think they could have done without the line from Jason where he said that he had a bad feeling. I get that that is a phrase so important to Star Wars that it basically has to be in every single movie and show, but I just felt like in that particular instance that that was not the right time for that line. Maybe that's just me, but again, that's a nitpick. I could do it with either or, to be honest. Of course, the thing that I think everybody is going to be talking about with regards to this episode, and I think now with this show entirely, is what does the very end mean for the next several episodes? The very end of which showcased us seeing Anakin Skywalker in The World Between Worlds with his former apprentice, played by Hayden Christensen. The World Between Worlds is such an interesting concept in Star Wars that I feel like now with this episode, it has maybe flipped it entirely on its head, and it's going to throw people through the whole world of trying to theorize what is going on. I mean, we know already Already that a Jedi can get into the world between worlds by being alive. We also know that the world between worlds gives you the power to save someone from an event that could have killed them in the case of Ahsoka Tano in Rebels. The event between her and Vader cemented that she was probably going to die in that instance, but Ezra saved her. My guess here is that she either died and went to the world between worlds anyway, or someone pulled her out of that event, kind of like how Ezra did do that and she is still alive. I would assume it was probably Anakin who did this, but now I also question if it is true. Anakin. Does the world between worlds let either a dead or a live person take you out? Anakin is not alive anymore, so again, there are just so many questions to think about here. I have a very big feeling that Filoni is going to tie the Mortis arc into this show very heavily because of this. I think that also means that I've got some homework to do and I'm going to go and rewatch that entire arc from Clone Wars before next week comes around. Other than that, again, like I said already, I think that this episode was amazing and I do have to say that I've noticed a lot of chatter online and I've seen a lot of people react to this episode and I feel like some of it is just not warranted. I've seen way too many people be overly hypocritical of this episode and also kind of just come off as if they really didn't care. And with that in mind, their carelessness seeped into the reviews of the episode. And it's not even really just for episode four. It's, it's kind of for the whole show entirely. I don't personally understand any of it and differences of opinions are fine. I just feel like when I see people overly criticize something that doesn't make sense, it kind of gets on my nerves. I'm not naming names, but when I see people say that the show kind of 
of comes off as feeling like it was written by AI, or that the character of Sabine doesn't feel like what she was in Rebels, I kind of just don't understand where that criticism is coming from. Maybe that's just me, but hey, I'm willing to hear people out as long as it makes sense. So overall, those are my thoughts on the Ahsoka show so far, and again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I know I don't really post that much on this channel. I have been focusing more on my main YouTube channel, which is linked in the description, but also I've had a lot of stuff going on in real life, so I've had to manage what I can. For anybody here who watches this video, subscribed or not, please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments with how you felt about the show and like the video if you enjoyed. I would also appreciate if you subscribe to the channel yet again as well. I hope everyone here has a wonderful rest of the day, and may the Force be with you.